audience. First of all, I would like to congratulate the organizing committee for your first international congress. And I want to thank the organizers, especially my dear friend Sultan, uh, for the invitation to such wonderful meeting. It's a great honor for me to be here with you. Today, I want to share with you our experience of being isolated aortic valve repair. I have no disclosure. We as a cardiac surgeons have been doing aortic valve replacement for many years, but we also know that we have some problems after the aortic valve replacement, uh, like as thromboembolism, anticoagulation hemorrhage, structural failure, and prostate valve endocarditis. And uh, if you look at results, long-term results after aortic valve replacement, you see that all valve-related complications approximately 60% after 15 years. And reoperation rates also not small number. For mechanical valves, after 15 years is 10% and uh, for bioprosthetic valves, approximately 30% the operation rate. Mortality also, after 15 years, more than 60%. Even in RAS operation, which is the other alternative for aortic valve patients, we have some problems also. And uh, for these reasons, uh, we're looking forward to aortic valve repair operations. Actually, aortic valve uh, repair operations started uh, for the beginning of open heart operations. First val aortic valve repair operations has done in 1958 years in the United States. And uh, we did uh, from 19. Uh, 60 years, some uh, techniques for aortic valve repair, and some of which still used today. For example, paracomptural application according to Trussler or subcomptural application according to Capron. But in practically, aortic valve repair is not widespread as a mitral valve. I think the question is that why aortic valve repair operations? Uh, in our daily practice night, not widespread as a mitral valve repair operations. I think we have not standardization for aortic valve repair and we have not standardized approach to aortic valve repair operations. And at this point, uh, I think uh, we need standardization to aortic valve repair operations. And I believe that we have established this standardization on three stages, preoperatively, intraoperatively, and postoperatively. We have a standard approach for a preoperative standardization uh, from uh, El Kuri, repair-oriented classification of aortic insufficiency, very similar to uh, mitral uh, valve uh, uh, insertion classifications type 1, type 2, and type 3, and it's a very useful tool for preoperative assessment for aortic valve patients. And intraoperative standardization is a very important stage for a successful aortic valve repair operations. We have to assess pre reconstruction and post reconstruction all components of aortic valve and aortic root. And we have to uh, understand all of pathophysiology and anatomy, uh, aortic root and including aortic leaflets. And we have to assess and correct together root and cusp pathology. For the intraoperative assessment, we have uh, echo assessment and direct measurements. For a root assessment, we have to measure by echo maximum sinus diameter, ST diameter, and AV diameter. And very objective criteria, intraoperative direct measurement, especially AV diameters. If we have more than 
25 or 28 millimeter AV diameter, they have to do uh, replacement aortic root also. And test assessment also very critical uh, stage on uh, these operations. We also use echo uh, assessment for a morphology and eccentricity, eccentricity of the jet. And intraoperatively, we can direct uh, assess uh, CASP's morphology, valve configuration, and CASP substance. In this point, uh, in, for an intraoperative assessment, we have two objective criteria for an assessment uh, CASP configuration and coaptation. One of them is geometric height. Uh, some studies show as normal geometric height uh, for a tricasp with patients is uh, 17 to 22 millimeter for a bicuspid patients 20 to 25 millimeters. Geometric height is useful pre-reconstruction assessment for aortic casts. Another objective criteria is effective height. For a measurement, uh, effective height, we need special caliper. As you see, this uh, caliber developed by uh, Professor Schaeffer from uh, Germany. <laughs> and effective height is very useful objective criteria for post reconstruction assessment uh, on the aortic valve repair operations. This slide very, uh, I think, is very important. On the left side, you can see measurement geometric height of the aortic. Uh, this is pre-reconstruction period. If we have uh, 20 millimeter or more than geometric height, we can do aortic valve repair operations. And on the right side, uh, we can measure uh, effective height. If we have approximately 90 10 millimeter effective height, it means uh, this is a successful aortic valve repair. We do some uh, uh, reconstructive techniques. Most of them is uh, uh, free margin plication. Uh, another technique is reinforcement of the free margin with uh, PTFA sutures, uh, triangularization, stabilization of cast with uh, otolopericardium. And in some cases, uh, we do valve repair with uh, aortic root reconstruction, a uh, combined aortic valve. Uh, as you know, we have two uh, well-known reimplantation and remodeling techniques, and we use also another techniques, remodeling plus extra aortic uh, ring implantation. As an extra aortic ring, you can use free uh, dacron graft or PTTA suture. In our experience, we use free uh, dacron graft. Postoperative standardization is also very important for a successful aortic valve repair. It is including early postoperative assessment and strict follow-up. And we don't forget that we can obtain best result isolated aortic valve repair operations. And we have some uh, limitations for an aortic valve repair. If we have uh, restrictive Pathology, so mean the type 3 aortic valve, uh, we uh, see not good results as a type 1 or type 2 patients. And latest studies showed us freedom from all valve related complications at 10 years was approximately 90%. And these results Freedom from valve related complications after valve repair seems superior compared to available data on standard aortic valve replacement. The absence of anticoagulations and the low incidence of valve related complications after repair results in a higher quality of life. And we can uh, summarize standardized approach to aortic valve repair. We have to check cast quality and measure of geometrical height. If we have no relevant classification and 
We have uh, more than 17 millimeter uh, for a tricuspid patients and more than 20 millimeter for a bicuspid valve. Uh, we uh, can do preserve aortic valve. And if our size diameter more than 40 or 45 millimeter, uh, we have to do root replacement with uh, valve preservation. If we need root and uh, cusp uh, repair together, we have to do root repair first and then uh, cusp correction. And we don't forget that we have uh, levels of difficulty in aortic valve repair. Of course, the root dilatation in tricuspid and or bicuspid valves collapse uh, one or more cusps and the aortic ventricular dilatation is more easy to do successful repair. Of course, uh, retraction or calcium acidification or uh, active endocardial station is more difficult for a successful aortic valve repair. Now I want to uh, show you our results uh, for uh, aortic valve repair patients. Our cohort was uh, 68 patients, mean age approximately 51 years, and most of them were male. 63 patients uh, were aortic root repair. Isolated aortic uh, valve repair we did on the uh, 27 persons, and on the 10 person patients we did combined repair. Which pathologies we did uh, our valve repair uh, operations? Uh, approximately 31 uh, persons patients were aortic root plus ascending aortic aneurysm. 27 percent uh, patients was aortic valve disease, isolated aortic valve disease. 22 persons was type A dissection, and 21 persons with, uh, were uh, aortic root aneurysm. And most of our patients were tricuspid aortic valves. And uh, mainly of, of our cohort were aortic insufficiency patients. Only 3 persons patients were aortic stenosis. Which kind of operations we did? We did uh, David reimplantation technique, remodeling technique, uh, isolated aortic valve uh, repair we did uh, 27 person patients and uh, 10 persons patients we did valve repair plus uh, root reconstruction. Most of our repair technique also was the pre margin application and in other techniques we use, uh, for example, subcomputerial annuloplasty, the suspension, autolox pericardial patch, leaflet replacement with pericardium, neocomputerial decalcification, and hemisherotomy. You can see our results on this uh, slide. Early mortality uh, for two patients, both of them uh, with acute dissection. Our length of the hospital stay was eight days. Follow-up approximately four years. Late mortality on one patient and pre-operation also one patient. Uh, and follow-up uh, showed us that Four patients mild to moderate, it is approximately six persons, and one patient moderate aortic inception. And you can see some images from our operations. These uh, patients, uh, we did uh, remodeling uh, plus valve repair and with extra aortic ring implantation. And in other patients, we replaced uh, aortic cusp with autolog pericardium. Let me summarize my topic. Uh, we need standardized approach is mandatory. Many strategies defined for aortic valve repair. First of all is uh, we have to normalize cast configuration and we have very important objective criteria uh, this criteria is, as I mentioned, effective height measurement. Specific valve configurations require tailored approach. 
and mortality after aortic valve repair is low. Valve-related complications after aortic valve repair are lower compared to valve replacement. Quality of life is better after valve repair. In most patients with aortic regurgitation, aortic valve repair is an alternative to valve replacement. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Is there any question or remark or comment? In the second service and the next service, I got results. And uh, a bit different with what, what I'm doing is the middle age of the patient. It's yeah. about 50 years. So yes. In my patients are usually the 20, 30s, uh, second decades. But again, I'm doing a lot of bifuspid, making bifuspid yes. and I, I, I get so from all the country. Yes, so, uh, we, uh, for uh, this for patients, we uh, don't uh, include uh, pediatric or young adults. This is only adult patients. Do you think it would be possible to do a TAMV after the TAMV or a reactive procedure? Do we have any, any knowledge on that? Uh, personally, I believe that yes, uh, we can. Uh, for example, uh, of course, uh, personally, I believe that uh, ideal valve is natural valve. It's not uh, having a fire prosthetic, not uh, exactly. And if you preserve a uh, natural valve, it's a great advantage for uh, many uh, aspects and uh, for future carry also. I think it's uh, preserve well, even with daily or uh, Yako, it's a great advantage. I agree with you, but when you have a leaking valve with the other time, maybe yes. then it's a huge operation to go back in because uh, it's so remodeled, you cannot always put simply a valve inside, and you have to redo the event procedure, which is something very, you know, it's, a real, yeah. it, it's significant. I always thought maybe if we could put a, you know, a tidy inside and win another 10 years and then do everything 10 years later when the patient is a bit of Yes. But, but um, I have no experience with that. I don't know if yes. anyone has uh, I have no experience also uh, a tidy after <coughs> daily for the uh, Yapo, but uh, as you know, it is a great day uh, for a shoes of uh, operation techniques for our valve disease and uh, uh, personally I believe that preserved valve and uh, our food as a daily or Yakub or Yakub plus for example last uh, cases uh, we chose more Yakub plus uh, extra thing it's more physiologically and uh, I uh, some studies also show that long-term results also better than for some dental or and other alternatives. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much.